In the previous lecture, we discussed how the subject of reliability came to be, how it evolved, and defined its scope and some terms related uh, to the discipline. Uh, today, we are going to look at how to set up a problem in reliability. Uh, this was our definition that uh, we discussed yesterday, that reliability is the probability that your item of interest would do its job over the service life. The points to note are uh, the domain omega that your item occupies, uh, that helps define it, uh, the performance objectives, the functions that it must satisfy, uh, gamma, and the service conditions theta under which it must operate. So as an analyst, uh, I need to consider several things and let's go through one by one. Uh, first is what is the level of details I need uh, to define the domain omega? Uh, what is the resolution? How many degrees of freedom do I need to look at? For example, uh, let's say I want to find the uh, strength of a cable. Do I treat the cable as just one member uh, with a single uh, yield strength or fracture strength? Or do I uh, go deeper uh, and look at the cable as made up of many, many strands and look and take into account the individual strengths of those strands and how they interact and um, how they come together in forming the cable system. It depends on what is my purpose. So as a user, as the analyst, uh, I get to decide what level of detail I need to look at in order to completely define my system. Uh, the next is, uh, what do I know? How much do I know about the uh, performance that my item is supposed to satisfy? Uh, do I know the physics of the problem? Do I know the underlying mechanisms? Uh, or do I simply have uh, a set of identical items that I can test and see how they're behaving? Uh, do I know the randomness in the physical parameters that define my item, that define its performance? Uh, do they vary with time and, and space? Uh, and do they do so randomly? Uh, if I start asking these questions, uh, I get to have the following answers. The first is whether I have a system or an element reliability problem at hand. So uh, what would give me that answer? How do I arrive at that decision? So um, I would ask these questions that is the item of interest uh, is it made up of two or more units? Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, these units are to be logically or physically connected so that, and this is very important, so that the item's performance can only be described in terms of the unit's performance. If I can ignore that, then obviously I don't need to look at uh, the units uh, for what they are. But is my system, is my, is my item defined only in terms of those units, two or more? Now, if the answer is yes, then I have a system reliability problem at hand and each such irreducible unit. So I cannot define one unit in terms of other further units. If that is so, it is an irreducible unit. And that unit we term as an element or component. So we will use this uh, term element and component interchangeably in this course. If the answer is no, then we have an element reliability problem. Now, it should be obvious that uh, this differentiation between an element reliability or a system reliability problem, it, it has no bearing on the actual size of the system. Uh, whatever the, the size, it can be a very small 
uh, item or a very large item if I can define this is the item in terms of one single performance function which we will see later uh, through several examples today then we have an element reliability problem howsoever large in real terms uh, that item may be but if I need to have uh, two or more performance functions uh, two or more logically or physically connected units then I have a system reliability problem the next question is whether I have a phenomenological or a physics based problem in hand so let's approach this step by step so is the definition of satisfactory performance the functional objective of the item is it available in terms of the underlying physics or the mechanics of the problem if so uh, is the randomness in those variables known do I have an idea about all the random variables or random processes that would define the physics of the problem and if it's relevant do I know their time and or their space dependence uh, if the answer is yes then I have a physics based reliability problem and that's what actually uh, we are going to see uh, in structure reliability so uh, a physics based problem is often termed as a capacity demand reliability problem or a stress uh, strength time if time is a factor uh, if things change with time randomly uh, then a stress strength time problem uh, and as I said a special case of that is the structural reliability problem if I do not have a physics based uh, definition of uh, the satisfactory performance uh, what uh, the item is supposed to do if I do not have that if I can only observe it uh, by testing uh, phenomenologically then I have a phenomenological reliability problem at hand uh, failure as I said is identified by observations and typically uh, described in terms of the the time to failure which uh, is the only random variable that defines my problem so the entire focus is on defining the random properties of the time to failure